بسم الله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد الحمد لله We had reached the portion of the hadith the tremendous hadith which has been named by the ulama the hadith of Jibreel We reached the portion where we were speaking about the second part of the shahada wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu wa ashhadu anna muhammadan rasulullah and i testify and bear witness that muhammad is the messenger of allah he is the slave and the messenger of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa qala al alama fadilatu shaykh shaykh salah al fawzan hafizahu allah ta'ala فمن معاني شهادة أن محمدا رسول الله and from the meanings of the shahada and from the meanings of the shahada that verily Muhammad is the messenger of Allah ترك البدع والمحدثات is that بدع innovation it must be left off in its totality as well as newly invented matters have to be left off totally all of this falls into the meaning of the shahada that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the messenger of allah wal iqtisar ala ma jaa bihi rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam as well as sufficing oneself with that which the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam came with that all of this enters into the meaning of the shahada that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the messenger of allah that we leave off all types and all forms of innovations all newly invented matters into the deen we leave it off and we abandon it and we suffice ourselves with that which the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he came with that now this falls into the meaning thumma aydan and also it falls into the meaning لا بد من تصديقه صلى الله عليه وسلم فيما أخبر وفيما أمر به ونهى عنه. is that we also have to believe in that which the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he informed us about. we have to acknowledge and accept and believe in that which the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he informed us of. and we have to believe and acknowledge the commandments of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. those things in which he commanded us to do. those actions that he made obligatory upon the nation and the like then we have to obey the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam with regards to this and this enters into the meaning of muhammad rasulullah that muhammad is the messenger of allah and also staying away from that which the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he prohibited us from naam to stay away from that which the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he prohibited us from then it also enters into the meaning of وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ And I testify and bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. So when we look at this, Ya عِبَادُ Allah, we see that it is not sufficient for an individual just to articulate the shahada. And then that's it. But rather, he would have to bring forth actions. He would have to bring forth beliefs that coincide with that statement. And this is of no surprise to Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah because we know that Iman is a statement, is an action, is a belief in the heart. It increases and it decreases. It increases and it decreases. Naam. So it is a must that when we say the Shahada, that we couple it with actions and we couple it with beliefs. Naam. The Shaykh goes on and he says, فَلَوْ عَمِلَ أَوْ فَلَوْ عَمِلَ الْعَبْدُ بِمَا جَاءَ بِهِ وَلَكِنَّهُ لَمْ يُصَدِّقْهُ 
He says, so even if a person were to act, even if a abd, a slave, he were to act in accordance with that which the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he came with. However, he didn't believe in it. He acted in accordance to it. He worked by it, but he didn't believe in it. The Shaykh he says, فَهَذِهِ طَرِيقَةُ الْمُنَافِقِينَ Then this is the way of the munafiqeen. This is the way of the hypocrites. Naam. The way of the hypocrites is that they act in accordance to that which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he came with. However, they don't believe in it. Naam. So it is a must, yani, that, that you see all of these things must be coupled. The statement is there by the articulation. The action is there. But it also must be coupled with what? With a belief. Because if not, then this is the way of the hypocrites. To bring forth a statement. And to bring forth actions. But not a belief. Then this is the way of the hypocrites. And this is... Bila shak, with no doubt, this is not sufficient. This is not going to work. This is not going to cut it. For whom, meaning the hypocrites, for whom you sallun, wa yasumun, wa yahujun, wa yujahidun, wa lakinna hum la yusaddiquna bima jaa bihi rasul, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. The shaykh, he says, that the hypocrites, they pray. And they fast, and they make hajj, and they fight jihad. They fight fi meaning they fight jihad. Naam. However, they do not believe in that which the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came with. They fight jihad, but they don't believe in that which the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he came with. So therefore, what is it of any benefit to them? No, it's of no benefit to them. It will not help them. It will not aid them. Naam. Ala kullin, the shaykh goes on and he says, فَلَبُدَّ مِنْ تَصْدِيقِهِ فِي مَا أَخْبَرَ بِهِ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامِ مِنَ مِنَ الْمُغَيَّبَاتِ الْمَاضِيَةِ وَالْمُسْتَقْبَلَةِ That we have to also believe in that which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he informed us of from those things that he was informed of of the unseen. Those things he informed us from the unseen, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, then we have to believe in them. Whether they be things that happened in the past, whether they be things that happened in the past, or things that will happen in the future, then we believe in them. Naam? Because the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he informed us of them. So if he, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, said it, then we believe in it because it is true. If he, sallallahu alayhi alayhi, informed us of something that occurred in the past, or something that will occur in the future, then we believe it. Because it's the haq, because it's true. And this is from the belief, or this is from what is necessitated by the shahada, wa ashadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. And I testify by witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. That we have to believe in that which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has informed us of from the past events and the future events. وَفِيمَا أَخْبَرَ بِهِ مِنَ الْأَوَامِرِ وَالنَّوَاهِ And also that which he has informed us of, from the commands and from the prohibitions. لا بد من تصديقه وعدم الشك في الشيء مما جاء به عليه الصلاة والسلام. And we have to believe in that which the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he informed us of. And we are not allowed to have any type of doubt. So believing in that which the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he informed us of without any doubt, without any doubt in anything that he came with sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Naam. And this is important. That we believe in that which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he informed us of without any doubt. No doubt had, no doubt can come to our mind with regards to this. Because he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam if he informed us about an affair that took place in the past or he informed us about an affair that will happen in the future. If the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded us for something or if he prohibited us from something then we know this is the haqq. Because as Allah Jalla wa Ala He says, وَمَا يَنْتِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَى إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَى Is that verily He and He, meaning the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He does not speak on His own desires. But rather what He speaks is revelation. Naam, rather what He speaks is revelation. This can be found in Surah Al-Najm in his verse 3 and 4. Again, that's Surah Al-Najm, 
and it's verse 3 and it's verse 4. Naam. وَقَالَ اللَّهُ جَلَّ وَعَلَى And Allah جَلَّ وَعَلَى He says وَمَا أَتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُضُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ Surah Al-Hashr, verse number 7. And whatever the messenger gives you, take it. And whatever he prevents you from, stay away from it. Whatever he gives you, take it. Whatever he, whatever he prevents you from, then you stay away from it. Naam. So obeying him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is a must. Is a must. It's not an option. It's not the better thing to do. But rather, it is a thing that we are obliged to do. وَتَجِبُ طَاعَتُهُ وَالْإِقْتِدَاءُ بِهِ And also what enters into the meaning of the second part of the shahada is that it is incumbent upon us in light of what we had mentioned from this ayah, from Surah Al-Hashr that can be found in verse number 7 and whatever the messenger gives you, take it and whatever he prohibits you from, then stay away from it that it is obligatory upon us to obey the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and to imitate him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the many ayat with which come bearing this meaning from them that which is found in Surah An-Nisa and his verse 59 where Allah Ta'ala he says Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu ati'u Allah wa ati'u al-rasul wa ulu amri minkum O you who believe obey Allah and obey the messenger and those in authority over you. Naam. وَقَالَ Allah Jalla Wa'ala. And Allah Jalla Wa'ala, He says, Ya ayyuha ladheena amanu, ati'u Allah wa rasoola. O you who believe, obey Allah and obey the messenger. Obey Allah and obey the messenger. وَلَا تَوَلُّوا عَنْهُ وَأَنْتُمْ تَسْمَعُونَ and do not turn away from him and you hear. Do not turn away from him and you're hearing the command. Naam. Do not turn away from him and you're hearing the command. This is in Surah Al-Anfal, verse number 20. Do not turn your backs on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and you're hearing the command. This is in the lifetime of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. After his death, do not turn away from his guidance and you hearing the ahadith. Do not turn away from his guidance and you knowing about the sunnah. Do not turn away from his guidance, ya ibadullah. But rather take to the guidance of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Naam. It's like Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahmatullah alayhi. He said, Man za'ima annahu sayahtadi bi ghayri hadji nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fa alayhi la'anatullah wal malaika wal nas ajma'in. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. He says, whoever foolishly thinks that he can be guided by other than the guidance of the Messenger of Allah, but other than the guidance of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then it is upon that person the curse of Allah and that of the angels and that of all of mankind. Naam. That whoever thinks that he can be guided by guidance other than the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then upon him is the curse of Allah, the angels, in all of mankind. Naam. Because verily, the finest guidance is the guidance of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Naam. Wa ahsan al-hadji, hadji Muhammadan Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The finest and best guidance huh, is the guidance of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Naam. And this is from the standpoint of what? Meaning that there is no guidance except the guidance of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If we want to be guided, then we have to be upon that which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was upon, as these ayat are commanded us to do, to obey the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Naam. Wa qala Allahu Ta'ala, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, ati'u Allah wa ati'u al-rasul, wa la tubtilu a'malakum. As it comes in Surah Muhammad, verse 33. In case a person was wondering, maybe being upon the guidance of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is better Maybe it brings more reward, but other than it, will bring a reward too. Huh? So if a person had this misconception, then this ayah sets him straight. Allah Ta'ala, he says, O you who believe, obey Allah, and obey the messenger, 
and do not render your deeds null and void. Why? Because if a person does something, Fisa Bidila, nah, he does it and he has ikhlas. Naam. However, he doesn't coincide. He doesn't comply with the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That action doesn't count. It's not going to benefit him. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said in authentic hadith, hadith al-Aisha. Man amila bi amila laysa alayhi amruna fahuwa raddun. Whoever doesn't, whoever does an action that does not have on it, amruna, our command, raddun. Then it is rejected. Naam. And the meaning of rad is mardud. It is rejected. Naam. Which means what? A person, he won't be rewarded for it. He does something and it's not in accordance to the hadith. It's not according to the guidance of the Prophet Wasallam. It don't count. He won't be rewarded for it. And we see this from this ayah and from this hadith. Naam. Allah Ta'ala, he says, وَلَا تُبْطِلُوا أَعْمَالَكُمْ And do not render your deeds null and void. Do not render your deeds null and void. Because the deeds will be written null and void if they are upon contrary than the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He says, Whoever obeys the messenger, then verily he has already obeyed Allah. Whoever obeys the messenger has already obeyed Allah. Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Naam. So it is a must that we obey the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because in this ayah, from Surah Al-Nisa, in his verse number 80, as Surah Al-Nisa, verse number 80, Naam, وَقَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى Allah Ta'ala, He says, وَأَتِعُ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ Eh, Naam, Ya Ibad. And this is in Surah Al-Ali Imran, verse 132, Who from amongst us, who from amongst us doesn't want mercy? Who from amongst us doesn't want mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Who from amongst us is not in need of Allah's mercy? Then of course the answer will be none of us. Huh? We all need Allah's mercy. We all want Allah's mercy. Naam. All of us want Allah's mercy. All of us are in need of Allah's mercy. None of us can do without the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Huh? So with that we should know that from the from the means that one has to take to attain that mercy is that he has to obey the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam as allah ta'ala says ati'ullaha wal rasul obey allah and the messenger la'allakum turhamun so that you will receive and be granted mercy so that you will receive and be granted mercy naam so we have to obey the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam if we want to be granted and blessed with mercy also, who from amongst us wants guidance? All of us. Is there any from amongst us who don't want guidance? No. We all want to be guided. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَأَن تُطِيعُهُ تَهْتَدُوا And if you obey Him, تَهْتَدُوا You will be guided. And if you obey Him, you will be guided. Who is the Him? Meaning, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Naam And this is in Surah Nur Verse 53 So again for reference We mention Some ayat They are In order That they were mentioned Surah An-Nisa 59 Surah Al-Anfal 20 Surah Muhammad 33 Surah An-Nisa 80 Surah Ali Imran 132 and Surah An-Nur verse 53 So in light of these ayat in light of these ayat we understand that obeying the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a must and we started this by mentioning the ayah from Surah Al-Hashar, verse number 7. وَمَا تَعْكُمُ الرَّسُولِ فَخُضُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُوا And whatever the messenger gives you, take it. And whatever he prohibits you from, stay away from it. So we have to obey him, 
sallallahu alaihi wasallam and we have to be wary and be careful not to contradict him sallallahu alaihi wasallam and to be and to take to something which is contrary to his guidance so we have to be wary of bid'ah we have to stay away from bid'ah na'am the shaykh says what sarqu al-bid'ah والمحدثات التي لم يأتي بها صلى الله عليه وسلم and we have to stay away from bid'ah and we have to stay away from the newly invented matters of which he صلى الله عليه وسلم did not come with فالخير كله فيما جاء به الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم because good all of it comes in that which he صلى الله عليه وسلم he the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم came with all good is found there نعم وما لم يأتي به فهو شر وَلَيْسَ بِخَيْرٍ And whatever he did not come with, then it's evil, it's not good. Naam. <coughs> all of these muhdathat, these bid'ah, that the people come with, all these bid'ah that the people come with, then it is evil. None of it is good. Naam. وَشَرُّ أُمُورِ مُحْدَثَاتُهَا وَكُلَّ كُلَّ لَيْسَ بَعْدَ مُعْذَمُهَا لَا كُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالًا وَكُلَّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ Naam. All bid'ah, and listen, the Prophet said, كُلُّهَا وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ كُلَّ he said all bid'ah, not some, not most, but all bid'ah, all bid'ah in the deen is huh? dolala, is it going astray. Wa kul, kul dolala tafinnar, and every going astray is in the fire, not most going astray, not some going astray, huh? all going astray is in the fire, you understand? So everything from bid'ah is evil. Everything that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came with is good. Naam. The Shaykh he says, "Well, كان صاحبه يريد به الخير," and even if the person wants by that bid'ah, good, it doesn't matter, it doesn't change anything. You understand? The Shaykh he says, "Well, the person who comes with the bid'ah, he wants good, right? And then he has a nerve, and he has the nerve to say, 'هذا زيادة خير, هذا زيادة خير.' That me doing this, I'm just adding on to good." Right? I'm just I'm just adding on to good. The Shaykh he says, Naqul, then we say to him, Naqul lahu, La, Hadihi bid'ah, wa bid'ah marduda, wa hadha shir, wa anta bizamika, tatakarrabu biha lilla, wa hiya tubaidu ka anilla. The Shaykh he says, No. Then we tell his person, No, what you're doing is bid'ah. Huh? And bid'ah is rejected. And it is evil. And this thing that you think that's getting you close to Allah. In reality, is getting you far away from Allah. That's the reality. Huh? Bid'ah brings you far away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amma sunnah. Sunnah is that which will get you close to Allah jalla wa'ala. Naam. Whereas the bid'ah, la. It'll get you far from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The shaykh says, وَهَذِهِ بَعْضُ مَعَانِي شَهَارَةِ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ لَلَّهِ وَأَنَّ مُحَمَّدَ الرَّسُولُ اللَّهِ He said, and this is just some of the meanings. Yeah, Some of the meanings of the testimony that nothing has a right to worship the truth except Allah and that verily Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. The shaykh says, كَذَلِكَ الَّذِي يَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ ثُمَّ يَعْبُدُ غَيْرَ اللَّهِ He's doing a na'am review now. Huh? Uh, the first part of the shahada. He says, likewise, the one who testifies that nothing has a right to be worshipped in the truth except Allah. But then, after that, he worships other than Allah. You understand? The shaykh, he says, كحال المشركين كحالة المشركين اليوم الذين يدعون الإسلام وهم يعبدون القبور والأضرحة He said, just like the condition of the polytheists of today, even those ones who claim in the Islam, huh? they claim Islam, but they worship graves and they worship altars and uh, and, the, and and the like. Now they worshiping graves and and the altars and, uh, and 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 this type of stuff. Sheikh says, "How ula la tasihu shahada tuhum bi an la ilaha illallah." He said, "These ones, it is not correct their shahada. It is not correct their testimony that nothing has the right to be worshipped in truth except Allah. The anna hum na qabuha bi shirk because they are making it deficient." They are rendering it deficient with their shirk. فَهُمْ يَتَلَفَّظُونَ بِاللَّهِ إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَلَكِنْ الْعَمَلْ عَلَى خِلَافِهَا Even though they, they are articulating La ilaha illallah, the actions are in contrary to it. The actions are in contradiction to it. So they're saying one thing, but they're doing something totally opposite. فَيَعْبَدُونَ غَيْرَ اللَّهِ And they're worshipping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَيَدْعُونَ غَيْرَ اللَّهِ And they're making dua 
to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're calling upon other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَيَسْتَغِيثُونَ بِالْأَمْوَاتِ And they're seeking help in times of peril with those who are dead. Whether it be wali such and such or wali so and so. It doesn't matter. They don't deserve anything from worship. They're not to be asked. They're not to be beseeched. They're not to be called upon for help. They're not to be asked for assistance and so on and so forth. Because they can't help themselves, let alone anybody else. All of these things are from ibadah. And they all belong to Allah Jalla wa'ala. Because this is from the meaning of La ilaha illallah. That everything from ibadah. Everything from ibadah belongs to Allah. From fasting, huh? from worship, from dua, na'am. from slaughtering, from fear, from hope, from seeking aid, help and assistance. Uh, in times of peril, uh, and outside of times of peril, so on and so forth. All of this belongs to Allah Jalla wa'ala. Naam. The Shaykh he says, فَهَاؤُلَا لَمْ يَشْهَدُوا إِنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ حَقًّا He said, these people, they don't testify and bear witness that nothing has the right to be worshipped in truth except Allah, truly, and in reality. It's not true. It's not in reality. Why? Because their actions are going contrary to that. The actions are going contrary to that. So in order for a person to testify with the shahad, then he has to comply with his actions and his belief. He has to comply with his actions and his belief, and he has to bring forth those actions that are necessitated by those statements. Naam. From worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, from uh uh yani directing all forms and all types of ibadah to Allah Jalla wa ala. From the from forsaking everything that is worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from having disbelief in those things which are called upon other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, naam, and from following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, being upon his sunnah, staying away from bid'ah, imitating him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, believing in that which he informed us of, believing in that uh, which, which, which he informed us of from the matters of the unseen, of the past, and of the future, from believing in the commandments in which he had uh, commanded us with. And the prohibitions in which he had prohibited us from. Believing in them by uh, fulfilling the commandments and staying away from the prohibitions. And so on and so forth. All of these things are from the meaning of the shahada. And the shaykh he says about these ones who are worshipping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The reality is that what? He says, وَلَمْ يَدْخُلُوا فِي الْإِسْلَامِ لِأَنَّهُمْ يَتَنَاقَضُونَ He said in reality... The ones who are saying things but their actions and their beliefs are not coinciding and matching that. Then they have yet to enter into Al-Islam because they are those who are in opposition. They are those who are contradicting uh, and those who are rendering deficient their, their shahada. So the stakes are high, ya ibad. This is not something that we can afford to play around with. We're talking about our Islam. So we have to. We have to. It is a must. That we know the meanings of the shahada, so that we may believe in them correctly, and that we may implement them bi'ithnillahi ta'ala. And this is a little from a lot. And we move on to the next rukan, rukan, iqam al salah, the establishment of the prayer. Walakin, naktafi bihad al qadar, wa sallallahu alayhi wa ala nabina Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.